This programme was made with support from the National Lottery Heritage Fund. We reported last month how the rich heritage of our coastal community is being recognised and supported by national organisations. And we'll be finding out more tonight from the man who leads the team at Create North East Lincolnshire. We also explore the history of the armed forces in the region and meet an ex trawlerman who is preserving and promoting our proud fishing heritage. Before joining North East Lincolnshire Council as strategic lead for culture, James Trosdale was part of the creative team that delivered the highly successful whole city of culture. He was able to call on this valuable experience to transform the cultural landscape of our region and generate a renewed interest in our rich heritage. I caught up with him earlier to find out more about the achievements so far and the strategy for the future. I think sometimes we collectively forget what a great place we live and work in. A lot of the work which we're trying to do is amplify that, consider that, think about what has happened in the past and how that shapes what we're trying to do in the future. I think heritage is ab absolutely critical. We've also been supported by heritage funds. Um, so we created the Heritage Network, working closely with Heritage Lincolnshire, which has enabled the heritage sector to come together. And that has enabled the foundations for other projects to, to grow as well, where we've given small grants out, out to people for them to have little pilot projects, test what works. And then that's got the foundations for additional investment coming in and supporting bigger projects. So those include one with a football club, looking at uh, the football club's history, Grim Fowl Fest, and there's also a project at Wheelsby Hall. Which again, the foundations and building the evidence and building the engagement about what needed to happen there led to a successful funding bid, which they're now growing and doing additional work, which could and should lead to multi-million pound investment in the building and fabric of Willsby Hall and beyond. The, the heritage is incredibly interwoven with our sense of place, our sense of pride. So we've recently moved from Grimsby Create to Create North East Lincolnshire for a few different reasons. And Create North East Lincolnshire is broader and it's deeper and it's more meaningful in the way that we're talking about culture and heritage across North East Lincolnshire. So we want to really, really showcase creative activity and highlight that the whole place is a creative place and there are lots more creative people living and working and visiting North East Lincolnshire than we, than we can ever imagine. And we just need to kind of keep amplifying that as best as we possibly can do and that amplification creates more success. We're really interested in our heritage and our green future. And we're also interested in digital innovation as well. And what we're also really keen to do is connect and put uh, Grimsby and Cleefox on the national and international map. James and the rest of the Create North East Lincolnshire team are promising to bring us some exciting events, activities and developments in entertainment, culture and heritage for 2024. The full interview with James will be available soon on our Facebook group and YouTube channel. When bosun Ron Telford retired from his life at sea, he didn't expect to be stepping aboard a fishing trawler ever again until he received an intriguing phone call and the offer of a job at the Fishing Heritage Centre. Now his fascinating tours of the Ross Tiger and his best-selling book Northern Waters are keeping alive our proud fishing heritage by recalling the tales of the men who risked their lives to put fish on the table. I caught up with him at the launch of his second book, 
middle waters. I started fishing in about 1965-66. During the school holidays, a man came to my grandmother's house and unbeknown to me, he was a trawler skipper. And he said to me, what are you doing then, lad? I says, nothing, I'm just messing about I'm on a beach, etc." He says, do I come to see you? I can go on a trawler. And I went on the Gillingham. And the man's name was Trevor Bascom, a big fishing family and all. And I went pleasure tripping and I was hooked. I helped uh, on the deck. Uh, you didn't realise that the men worked 18 hours a day and six hours sleep. If you can imagine a whale with its mouth wide open, you've got a weight on one side which keeps the net on the bottom and the flotation that keeps open. And that's how we catch fish, pull it along the seabed. On a trawler, we had an echo sounder. It showed at the bottom of the seabed and it's tried to distinguish the feed from the bottom of the seabed and the fish. And it's more or less impossible. It's just see something there if you catch fish, a bonus. No fish, try somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Say, for an instance, now we're fishing outside Grimsby, no fish there. We'll move to Immingham, no fish there. We'll move to Aberdeen. You know, so we wait till the fish comes aboard. And once you catch the fish, would you tell your brother that you're catching fish who was alongside you? The answer is no. Get as much fish as you can yourself, then tell other people because that fish it won't stop there. As soon as another boat will come alongside, that fish will scatter. Up to six men then would stand there hours on end, clean the fish into the washing machine, which went down the chute, and threw an escape hatch into the fish room. And then the men would put the fish away in different boxes down the fish room, or different squares, because we're catching cod, Halleck, Whiting and Coley. You have wooden boards, and you lay the fish down like sardines in a tin, and then you cover the fish completely with ice. Do another layer of fish, more ice. Another layer of fish, ice, set of boards, and repeat the process. I started fishing in 1965, and I was still fishing up to 92, 94, because we were fishing down the Falcons. And it's the last day in trawler out of Grimsby, and the cold day of the Safco Endeavour. And it was half Grimsby lads and half a whole crew, about Nine years ago, decided to call it a day, hang up my stockings or my boots and such, and uh, I retired. Then I got a phone call out of the blue. Did I want to be a tour guide? And I just laughed. And the wife says, go on, give it a go. And I've been doing it five years now. Grimsby was the biggest fishing port. We had up to about 500 ships, about 7,000 men working on the docks. And all we've got now is Ross Tiger. A lot of you know, how things are now, people, people you know, kids and things, they're not bothered about fishing. But when they've done a tour of the Ross Tiger, they, they completely change. They, they realise where fish comes from. Uh, their grand, great grandparents in Grimsby, you don't realise how many people are involved in fishing in Grimsby. But, to give the knowledge back and the history of the fishing industry, that's what we're trying to do. The wife said to me, what about writing when you first started? And I, I wrote that about, say, nearly 18 months ago, two years ago, and I became number one bestseller on Amazon, Northern Waters. The settled book is called Middle Waters, and that is all complete. Uh, after Christmas, I'm going to start writing about deep water. And the deep water is my time going down to the Falcons, fishing for squid and, uh, and other species. Lots of people have uh, private messaged me and said, Ron, thanks so much for these memories, because you've rekindled all the memories that I thought I'd forgotten. Yeah, it's important, you know, we don't want to lose this heritage. You know, Grimsby fishes port, like I keep saying, but uh, we don't lose that.
So even giving your baby just one feed will protect your baby for the rest of its life. Obviously I knew that breast milk was good for them, but I didn't know that it actually makes antibodies. It protects children from various illnesses, from gastroenteritis, childhood cancers, respiratory illnesses, reduces the risk of SIDS, obesity and cardiovascular disease. So let's improve our health, our baby's health, by breastfeeding. We are sorry to report the sad news of the sudden loss of artist Judy Tucker, an outstanding artist, curator, teacher and academic, who together with her partner, poet Harriet Tarlow, spent many years exploring the unique environment, culture and beauty of the Humberston Fitties through art, poetry, workshops and exhibitions. Her series of paintings, Night Fitties, perfectly captures the vulnerability, precarity, occupation and emptiness of this fragile and mystical place on our eastern shoreline. Artist and environmentalist Judith Tucker, who died last month. The people of North East Lincolnshire have a proud history of service in the armed forces, which is celebrated each year with a spectacular event. Gemma, Elise, Alex and Dan went to discover the stories behind this historical connection in a two-part feature. Tonight, they begin their journey in Cleethorpes. Have you ever wondered why so many military planes fly over Grimsby and Cleethorpes every day? Well, it's because Lincolnshire has so much flat land, making it the perfect place for RAF bases. So perfect, in fact, that during World War II, over 46 air bases were located in the county, giving Lincolnshire the nickname Bomber County. Today, we're in Cleethorpes to take a look at some of the war memorials located here and have a chat with some of the local veterans who have served our country. During both World Wars, Grimsby and Cleethorpes provided thousands of men for various military and naval units. Many of them joined the 10th and 11th Lincolns, the Royal Field Artillery and the Lincolnshire Yeomanry. Grimsby provided over 400 trawlers with nearly 6,000 fishermen to man them. Altogether, a total of about 14,000 men went into various services. What was left of the fishing fleet carried on amid the dangers of the North Sea. And in this perilous endeavour to maintain the food supply, 156 trawlers were lost or captured, and over 500 fishermen perished. To commemorate those lost at war, Grimsby and Cleethorpes has a number of war memorials and cenotaphs. And here in Cleethorpes, the Remembrance Gate overlooks the beach. It was dedicated 10 years ago during 2013 on the Armed Forces Day celebrations. The crest shows the Army's crossed swords, the eagle of the Royal Air Force and a naval anchor in the centre. Eight stainless steel plaques and two larger granite plaques honour every branch of the Armed Forces and Merchant Navy. Just a short walk from the Remembrance Gates is the Pier Gardens, which is home to the RAF Northcote's Strike Wing Memorial. This memorial commemorates the men and women who served as pilots, navigators and ground personnel, which formed the Royal Air Force Northcote Strike Wing during the Second World War. From 1942 to 1945, the RAF Northcote Strike Wing were instrumental in disrupting German supply chains in the sea, destroying over 150,000 tonnes of enemy shipping. But sadly, 120 aircraft never returned from fighting and 241 aircrew sadly lost their lives. A popular venue with service personnel and veterans is the Royal Naval Association Club based here on Alexandra Road in Cleethorpes. And I'm gonna go inside and talk to some local veterans who are based here. I love Grimsby and Cleethorpes. At 16 though, I didn't want to be a fisherman, so I joined the Royal Navy. And I never looked back from that. I was a boy sea cadet. Uh, always wanted to go in the Navy, which was against my 
family's wishes because they're all RAF. <laughs> I joined the Navy in 78 as a boy sailor. I was a acting leading marine engineer and mechanic, mechanical electrical. I joined initially as a stores accountant and branch transferred to the seaman department, became a radar operative. Multitude of experiences, from heartbreak to total joy and, and happiness. The different sights that greet you every morning when you come up from below deck. You could come up and you're alongside a harbour somewhere and you've never ever been before, the smells and the noises, it, it, it's just such a, 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 you can't explain the experience that you get. I got put onto HMS Hermes, which at the time was the flagship of the Royal Navy. We were storing ship, ready to go to Canada. And I was really looking forward to it. And then we were told, cancel or leave, you're going to the Falklands. Argentina seizes the Falklands after a brief gun battle. The Argentine flag is flying tonight over the capital, Port Stanley. And a lot of us went, where's the Falklands? Young kids, we'd never heard of it. Uh, 17, 18 year old lads going to war, it's a bit of an eye opener. We came under attack quite a few times. And then obviously we had the Atlantic conveyor with us. We were about a mile apart and she was hit with an next set and blown up. And so we flew out today to put the fires out. An 18 year old, that's, um, that's a really big eye opener. But yeah, it made me grow up pretty quick. I moved over here just over 12 months ago, become part of the committee on the Navy Club in Cleethorpes. Uh, I always felt welcome. People are here to talk and support and help, and that's what I like about this area. Well, Grimsby and Cleethorpes is a massive, massive armed forces area. In any regiment, you'll have somebody from Grimsby and Cleethorpes. To come here on Armed Forces Weekend and see everybody turn out in the thousands, and everyone is welcome. It's a club for everybody. Anybody that's saved, no, no, they just love coming out and talking to each other. I get upset about this story, but. Uh, I do. No. We open our door to everybody, and I mean everybody. Anybody can come in this club on that day. There are some veterans out there that are lonely, and that's one day a year and they're not. Well, that's all from the Heritage Channel for now. To make sure you don't miss any of our programmes, subscribe to our channel or join our Facebook group. For a roundup of arts and entertainment across the region, plus a review of the latest book and film releases, tune in to our sister channel, Billboard TV. Best wishes for Christmas from everyone at the Heritage Channel. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the new year when we will have news of a £450,000 grant from the National Lottery Heritage Fund to support participation and engagement, strengthening heritage-led partnerships. Programs on the Heritage Channel are made with support from the National Lottery Heritage Fund.